If you've ever been wondering if animals can help filter your pond water, you're not alone. I get asked all the time about shrimp, mussels, daphnia and different types of fish. It sounds like a cool idea, right? Animals that filter the water. So today we're going to talk about what really works, and spoiler alert, it's not the animals you might think. If you don't already know me, my name is Kev, and the aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain a pond without spending a fortune. So if that sounds like something that interests you, you might like to subscribe and check out my website, ozponds.com. Let's start by talking about some of these animals that can contribute to water filtration. First up, shrimp and freshwater mussels. These guys are natural filter feeders. They feed by filtering out small particles like algae, organic matter, and even bacteria. It's pretty fascinating. Shrimp can help reduce algae buildup, while freshwater mussels and clams filter out tiny particles from the water, improving the clarity. Next we have tiny creatures like Daphnia and Rotifers. These tiny creatures feed on other microorganisms, as well as algae and detritus, and that can help keep your water clear. But not only are these animals helping keep the water clean and clear, they're also recycling nutrients, and they provide a good natural food source for the fish or other large animals inside the pond. In an aquatic ecosystem, everything carves out its own little niche. Everything is consuming everything, and death brings life. The whole thing is symbiotic, meaning that certain animals or organisms need other animals or organisms to survive. For example, the freshwater mussels that I keep in my ponds need a fish host to lay eggs. I believe they're deposited under the fish's gills. If there isn't enough algae, detritus or plant material, the shrimp and other microscopic organisms like Daphnia cannot thrive. And if they don't thrive, the fish may need supplement feeding. Stalbert foods have their own issues, and they can contribute to lesser water quality and clarity and the need for more frequent cleaning or additional filtration. A pond with a functioning ecosystem will require less work and intervention from you. Sure, it might look a little dirty, but this is natural. The water is still very clear and healthy, and the animals inside the pond are thriving. This to me is the perfect trade-off. I get to sit by a pond that looks natural, and yet the water is still very clear. Then we have the animals that spend a transition phase inside the pond. The classic tadpole, various types of larvae like dragonflies and mayflies, etc. And I even guess salamanders and newts fall into this next category. These animals aren't really filter feeders like the others, yet they still contribute to the overall health of your pond by eating algae, small insects and decaying organic matter. They help prevent overgrowth and keep the water balanced. As these animals undergo their transformations, they remove nutrient and energy from the pond. Tadpoles, for example, begin their lives in the pond as aquatic creatures, feeding on algae and organic matter. But as they mature, they eventually transform into frogs, leaving the pond altogether. And this process is very beneficial to your pond. This is like doing a water change, netting the pond, or manually removing plants. Yet we didn't need to do anything. We just watch nature work. Of course, sometimes you still may need to do those things, but the closer we can work with nature, the less work we need to put in. Dragonfly and mayfly larvae is another great example. These little creatures spend most of their lives underwater, feeding on small insects, larvae, and even small aquatic animals like fish fry, and they help control populations of pests and keep your pond in balance. So any animal that spends its development stage inside the pond is like this. They're our exporters. While they're active in the pond, they help keep things in balance. And once they leave, they actually reduce the nutrient load in the water, which can help prevent overgrowth and maintain water quality. Now, before we move on to the absolute best organism for water filtration, let's quickly talk about algae and plants, because they play a vital role in the pond's ecosystem. Algae often gets a bad rap, but in moderation, they help absorb excess nutrients from the water, the problem is when they get out of control, which usually happens when there are too many nutrients and not enough competition. That's where plants come in. Aquatic plants, especially those that grow fast, compete with algae for nutrients, helping to naturally balance your pond. So a good mix of plants can help prevent algae blooms, while also providing shade, oxygen and habitat for beneficial organisms. 
So while all the things that we've just mentioned can definitely contribute to water clarity and quality, the real heroes of filtration in your pond are the bacteria. Without bacteria, none of these other animals will thrive, from the tiny Daphnia to the fish. The bacteria are the workhorse of pond filtration. They break down organic waste like fish poo, dead plants and uneaten food. You'll often hear people talk about beneficial bacteria in filters and for good reason. These bacteria help convert harmful substances like ammonia and nitrites into less harmful nitrates, which are safer for your pond's ecosystem and can be consumed by plants. There's bacteria that can process phosphates and reduce the level of sludge buildup in a pond. There's also bacteria that thrive in oxygen rich areas and bacteria that thrive in oxygen poor environments. Bacteria are very diverse. Some are good and some not so good. But without bacteria, you'd be left with poor water quality, algae blooms and an unhealthy pond environment. That's why even if you have shrimp or mussels helping to clean up the water, bacteria are still the most important factor in keeping your pond healthy and clear. If you want to learn more about bacteria, watch this video that I've linked in the description. I find the best way to increase the number of bacteria, good organisms and biodiversity inside the pond is to add a bog filter. If you want to learn more about bog filtration and how it can benefit your pond, make sure to check out my other videos. You can also grab my downloadable PDF, which gives you everything you need to create the perfect DIY filtration system for any pond. And that's all available at ozponds.com. I do hope this video has been helpful. If you thought so, give the thumbs up button a little tickle. Thanks for watching. See ya.